All right, that'd be fine too. Later, but just Doesn't for work. folks that are wanting to watch live at home, won't be able to do that. So we're just missing Rob, I guess, eh? He's just coming in right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, the, the connection for the, the live stream is not working, so I think we should just go ahead and I can post it after. Um, it's pretty quick. All right. Thanks, Rob. I'll try again, but um, we can get going if you like. Okay, you all ready to go home? Maureen is not joining us? Uh, I believe she's here. here. Yeah. So are you all ready to go home? I'm good. Members of the public, would you mind, um, Liz, would you mind turning your camera off just until it's your turn to speak? Thank you. I'm going to be turning my audio off every once in a while because there's somebody doing major landscaping outside. <laughs> Very noisy here. All right. Thank you, Maureen. Okay, well, let's get going. Uh, welcome to members of the public for this um, this public hearing and council and administration. This will be a public hearing of Monday, uh, June 22nd, 2020. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And the first one is the Mayor Andrew will describe the procedure for the public hearing, which is this public hearing is being convened in order to consider and receive submissions regarding bylaw number. 501 2020 short term rentals. Anyone who believes that their interest in property is affected by this proposed bylaw will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard, make representations, or to present written submissions respecting the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. No one will be discouraged or prevented from making this or his or her views heard. To maintain order during public hearings and to ensure everyone has a reasonable opportunity to be heard, the following rules of procedure have been established. If you wish to address the public hearing, please ensure that you place your name on the speaker's list. You may add your name on the list at any time. If you are speaking from prepared remarks, please give a copy to the minute taker. Please commence your remarks by stating your name and address. If you are speaking on behalf of some other persons or organization, please identify the name of the person or organization. Each speaker is requested to limit their remarks to no more than five minutes each time, subject to adding your name to the speaker's list again. You must, limit your, you must limit your comments to the proposed bylaws and you must not obstruct the public hearing. I request that all speakers be respectful of others and ensure that your comments, your comments address a specific issue being considered. After everyone on the speaker's list has spoken once, speakers will be allowed supplementary pre presentations if they have added their name to the list again. You may not present a submission you have already made. Any person who wishes to present a written submission to council may do so, and all written submissions must be received by council before the close of this hearing. Please observe these rules, and if you have any concerns with the manner in which the public hearing is conducted, Please direct your comments to the mayor. In considering the pro proposed bylaw, council has received documents which may influence its decision. These documents are available for review during this hearing. Your only opportunity to comment on the proposed bylaw is during the public hearing. The members of council are not permitted to receive further submissions regarding the proposed bylaw after the public hearing is closed. After the public hearing has concluded, council may, without further notice, make whatever decision it deems proper with respect to the bylaw that are the subject to this public hearing. End of uh, instructions. So I think we're gonna go right through to uh, the presentation then. 
And that'll come from uh, Emma Chow, our community planner. Thank you. Um, going to try and uh, start up this uh, share screen. Okay. All right. Um, this will be a, a quick presentation from the planning department for a public hearing on the short-term rental bylaw amendments. There will be three bylaws that are being amended. That's the land use bylaw, business licensing bylaw, and the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw. And to start us off uh, all on the same page, um, I just wanted to define what we're talking about when we say short-term rental. This will be a dwelling unit or a portion of one that is rented for a period of less than 30 days. Short-term rental is an umbrella term that would include bed and breakfast, commercial accommodations such as um, guest house or resort centers, as well as entire private homes, such as those commonly found on internet platforms such as Airbnb. Uh, I just want to emphasize that the set of bylaw amendments that we are considering today proposes new regulation only for entire home private, uh, private home rentals. We are not looking at bed and breakfast and commercial accommodations as those already have existing regulation in the land use bylaw. To make it even more clear, the distinction between these different types of short-term rentals, when we're talking about bed and breakfast, that is a use that has always been allowed on um, Bowen Island as a home occupation on residential zone lots, which are shown um, shaded in orange in the map here. As you can see, that is most of the developed area on Bowen Island is zoned residential where you can run a bed and breakfast as a home occupation, 365 days a year. The operator must be a resident of the dwelling and the entire dwelling cannot be used for the short-term rental. Commercial short-term rental options, as the name suggests, is a much more intensive short-term rental use where the entire facility or premise can be used as a short-term rental year round. On uh, Bowen Island, this includes commercial guest accommodations, guest house, inn, and retreat centers, and they are allowed in commercial zones, as shown here in this map scattered across the island. And as I had mentioned at the beginning, the set of bylaw amendments that we are considering today do not focus on the bed and breakfast or these commercial options. We are looking at an emerging industry on the island where entire private homes are being used for short-term rentals. This is where the operator is not a resident of the home or not present during the operation. These types of short-term rentals have existed on Bowen for some time and provide an important source of accommodation for visitors and workers. Um, but they have been increasing significantly, mainly due to the advent of online platforms such as Airbnb. Um, and with that, there are also increasing concerns for the community. So with that in mind, Council directed staff to undertake some community engagement over 2019 to help develop a regulatory approach for short-term rentals. This policy, Short-Term Rental Policy 1905, was adopted at the end of 2019. We are currently in the implementa implementation phase of this work program, which includes bylaw amendments to help enact that policy. During the engagement phase, key community needs were identified um, related to short-term rentals. Um, it was found that they do provide a very important source of income for many homeowners, especially those that are part-time residents. Um, they also have a lot of tourism benefits for the community. But many also voice concerns around impacts on affordability and availability of long-term rental housing, as well as neighborhood impacts, such as on safety, security, um, services, and the general enjoyment of residential neighborhoods. So to address a lot of those needs, the policy has several main objectives. Firstly, we do want to permit short-term rental use of entire dwellings, but as accessory use on residential lots, where the principal use should be to provide a residence for a member of the community. 
This type of use will also need to be regulated to help minimize impacts on neighborhoods and long-term housing. Um, this will be done mainly through accountability of the operators, and it is important that the regulations be enforceable. So I'm just going to keep those objectives on the screen while I go through a summary of each of the bylaw amendments so that you can see how they directly relate to the policy objectives. The first thing we're doing here is permitting short-term rental use, as I mentioned, by amending the land use bylaw to include the use residential guest accommodation. This will be defined as an accessory use of a dwelling that is ordinarily occupied as a residence for temporary accommodation of a paying guest for a period of less than 30 days. For clarity, a residential guest accommodation does not include a bed and breakfast or any of the commercial options that we had discussed earlier. This is strictly to allow short-term rental use of a private dwelling as an accessory use on a residential lot. We have also amended the land use bylaw to allow bed and breakfast to have limited kitchen facilities. So this is like a mini fridge and countertop like in appliances. Currently, the regulations do not, do not allow any kitchen in bed and breakfast. And this change was added to allow bed and breakfast to stay competitive as we permitted residential guest accommodations that have full kitchens. And then secondly here, both residential guest accommodation and bed and breakfast will be permitted on properties that contain secondary suites. This was a common request during the engagement period and council has considered the impacts of such uses on secondary suites to be minor. Um, so this change will be included as part of the amendment. There will also be a set of use specific regulations for residential guest accommodations. Since this is a new use, we are also proposing a set of regulations for this use. Um, first and foremost, the use will be limited to 120 days a year. And this is not necessarily 120 consecutive days, but a total <laughs> of 120. It looks hopeful anyway. Thank you. Okay. Um, 120 days total over a year. And this is considered um, definitely the most permissive um, of this type of regulation. Most municipalities um, that want to keep this use accessory uh, will limit it to principal residences. So only those where the resident is living in the home for most of the year can use it as short-term rental. Um, we felt that was not practical for Bowen where many homes have part-time owners and part-time residents that are still important members of the community. Um, other municipalities that have used limits on days such as this range from one month to four months. So 120 days is the equivalent of four months and that is the most permissive of any of uh, the regulations that we have found. Um, in addition to this, we are also adding regulations to limit number of guests to two per bedroom and also requiring at least one on-site parking space per bedroom. Moving on to the business licensing bylaw. This will be our main regulatory tool to ensure accountability of operators. All residential guest accommodations will require a business license to operate and that license must be displayed in all advertising. Um, for the application, the oper oper operator needs to show proof of adequate insurance and disclose number of bedrooms, guests and parking. The license fee is $300, and this was based on research of local municipalities, as well as estimated uh, administrative and enforcement costs. And one of the key terms of the business license will be designating um, an individual or um, the term designated individual as the primary contact for a residential guest accommodation. This person will be responsible for the operations of the short term, uh, the residential guest accommodation. And most importantly, they must be available 24 hours during operation and respond to any nuisance complaints within two hours. And lastly, the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw will be amended to include a penalty for operating a residential guest accommodation without a license. 
The first contravention will be more of a warning at $150. However, any further contravention will impose the maximum penalty of $500 a day. So this is essentially the, um, the main enforcement tool that we have um, that is readily um, easily enforceable. Um, so this is the main amendment um, for enforcement. And that pretty much summarizes all three bylaws that are being amended. And uh, at this point, I'm going to pass this back to Hope for public comment. Thank you, Emma. That was um, that was very clear. It was awesome. Thank you. Okay, Hope, over to you for the uh, public hearing submission slash input. Uh, so we have four um, members that are um, four members of the public that have pre-registered, and starting with Sylvain Zimmerman. Okay. Thank you. If you're here. So Sylvain, if you're here, um, you can unmute and turn your camera on. Doesn't look like she is, so I'll move to the second, which is uh, Liz Nankin. So you can unmute and turn your camera on if you're here, which I think you are. Oh, um, just start the video. Okay. Hi there. Thank you. Um, my name is Liz Nankin, and I am a board member of Tourism Bowen Island. Um, our address is 432 Cardinia Road. I am also an owner of a B&B on the Crown Point area, 310 Forest Ridge Road, uh, Libaloo Cottages. I'm speaking on behalf of the Tourism Bowen Island Board, as well as its 100 plus members of uh, business owners and um, accommodation owners of Bowen. Um, as you consider the proposed bylaw regarding the short-term uh, vacation rentals tourism Bowen Island would like to reiterate that we are adamantly opposed to any of the limitation of the number of days that the license STR v VR would um, be able to uh, operate whether it's a limitation applied uh, through the short of COVID-19 uh, a policy 1905 or other bylaws and regulations put on by the municipality, we really oppose to such a limit. Um, we recommend that the business meets uh, criteria for STVR license and, and agree with all your new implementations to operate in a 365 days a year. Tourism Bowen Island has worked very hard to create um, a economic and social uh, uh, support system for our businesses and our residential owners to be year round. There were record breaking numbers last year in terms of tourism, which put an extraordinary amount of revenue into the Boeing community, which everyone benefited, benefited from. I personally uh, know when I am renting my cottages out that um, a two night guest would be able to spend probably 200 to $500 plus a day on top of the accommodation rental. I see it when they come back with purchases, wine, grocery gifts from our many amazing stores and shops and galleries. Uh, Tourism Bowen Island has been uh, really uh, in uh, working in conjunction with our businesses because of pre-COVID, we were working really hard to keep our businesses and uh, stores and shops open all year round. And they do suffer during the, what you call the down season or the fall and winter season. Uh, we've been working hard to keep this as an economic structure that brings money into Bowen all throughout the year. This uh, STRV would really, uh, work in backward of how, what we've achieved this uh, past year. Uh, in terms of uh, having a limitations and to the 120 days, it does not create a community stability with uh, families, uh, people that are needing jobs, people in need to have to find new residential accommodations to live in 
every four to six months. Um, families coming in to enroll their children in school uh, will be stressed to find affordable accommodations, rental accommodations, and we feel that that relies upon a good partnership with the municipality and the BC government to apply for grants with not just priority uh, housing, but affordable housing. So again, I thank you for your time. And again, I want to stress, we request that you consider that the STBR matter go through the lens of tourism and for the development and the sustain sustainability for our businesses and our accommodation owners. And that's so vital to the growth and uh, the stability to our uh, beloved Bowen Island. So thank you. Next is Rosemary Knight. Hello, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm here to talk about the proposed bylaw amendment related to short-term rentals. And I'm going to start by quoting Michael Kale or referring to what Michael said at a council meeting two weeks ago. And that is when faced with difficult decisions, council should really defend what defines us as a community. And what we've adopted as defining us are the outcomes from the Boeing Landing Initiative which tapped into a broad cross-section of Islanders. And the response from residents on this island, the number one word that came across as they described Bowen Island was community. And so I think it's that term community that we need to think about very, very carefully when we consider the proposed bylaw amendment. I'm concerned about allowing 120 days of rental of entire dwelling units when the owner is absent. So this is like conducting a social experiment on this island, but this experiment has actually been conducted all over the world with Airbnb and other examples of short-term rental. And in many places, this has been deemed a failed experiment. The result is now cities and small communities scrambling to reverse course and facing legal challenges from Airbnb and from landowners whose property values will be affected. So why did this experiment fail? And I think it's so important to acknowledge that it has failed in many places around the world. It failed very simply for two reasons, impact on housing and impact on neighborhoods. So why would we want to repeat this same failed experiment here? What we care about on Bowen, what defines us is community. And one of the essential values in our community is providing affordable housing. This change in short-term rentals will have a direct impact on the ability of our community to provide affordable housing, an essential part of maintaining a diverse community. Not only will this change take rental units off the market, it will distort market prices. The first is obvious and immediate. It is the second that is less obvious and a longer term effect. I've heard this initiative being described as a mortgage helper so that people can afford to buy on Bowen. While this might help the owner of today, the unfortunate unintended consequences seen around the world is that this simply drives prices up as people pay more and more relying on short-term rentals to cover the difference between affordable and market-driven pricing. So there is no doubt that this legislation will increase property values. And it is a direct impact on affordable housing, not as immediate as the loss of rental stock, but inevitably is going to further increase property values on this island. This change to short-term rentals will also have an impact on neighborhoods and through that on the larger sense of cohesion in the Bowen community. Community that is so important to this island. There can be no doubt that having a dwelling occupied by long-term residents contributes to building our neighborhoods in a way that short-term rentals with absentee owners never can. The presence of such rentals in neighborhoods diminishes the sense of community and connection. There's also the risk of the impact to the neighborhood through noise and other disruptive behavior. It's one thing to talk to your neighbor, 
with whom you have a long-term relationship and you're both invested in making this work, it's very different to be dealing with problems with someone who you've never met before and who you'll never see again, and they'll never see you again. And as we all know, Bowen tends to be very relaxed despite the best of intentions in bylaw enforcement outside of weekdays nine to five. So to conclude, please focus on how we define ourselves, that is community. Tourism is important, but our community comes first. I urge you to look very carefully at the section that allows for any short-term rental for 120 days when the owner is absent. As I said, this experiment has been tried. It's been tried all over the world and it's failed in many places because of the impact on housing and the impact on neighborhoods, two things that we deeply care about on this island. So why would we conduct this experiment on our island where community is number one? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Jody Lorenz is next. Hello, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak this evening. I appreciate or this afternoon, I should say. Thank you. Um, and I just want to say thank you for Rosemary and everybody who's sharing their um, concerns and comments. Uh, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge um, that this short term rental policy is extremely complex. There's many different issues uh, involved. Um, so it's no easy feat to try to figure out how to move forward with this. Um, in recent days, uh, as the policy has been going on, um, I have, uh, I, I guess I've come down to, oh, so, sorry, first of all, I should have introduced myself. Sorry, my name is Jody Lorenz. I live on Bowen Island. Um, I work part-time with Tourism uh, Bowen Island, and I'm also a member of the Community Economic Development Committee. And I am a renter. I've been a renter. I'm a single parent, and I'm a renter. So uh, I'm quite aware of um, the circumstances involved um, on many levels here. Um, so in recent days uh, with Tourism Bowen Island and with, also with the Community Economic Development Committee, we've had discussion about the short-term rental policy. And um, I know as Emma's presented and, and gotten feedback from the community over and over again, the 120 day um, limitation is, is often a huge stumbling block for people that, uh, um, in, in either pro or con, um, wanting that 100 day, uh, 20 day. Um, having done a little bit more reading, there was um, the UBCM 2019 STR policy implications presentation back in 2016. And then looking at some of the other communities such as the city of Nelson. Um, I've come to, I would like what I'm proposing, and I did put a short letter in writing, is to a compromise approach to this. Uh, the reality is the 120 day uh, limit will suit uh, quite a few people that are doing this as a mortgage helper. Um, it's a suite in their house. They need the flexibility with a family coming. So the 120 day policy will work quite well for them. Uh, where it doesn't work very well is for uh, the operators that have been operating on a commercial li uh, license way. Um, as you know, Bowen Island does not have a hotel. We don't have lodges. Um, yet we are and always have been for over 100 years a, a, a desirable destination, primarily for Metro Vancouver residents, but elsewhere. Um, so there is the demand um, that we need the 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 STRs fill help fill a demand of people wanting to come here, enjoy nature, enjoy our community, and um, the the STRs fill that need. Now, the ones that have been operating responsibly commercially um, to impose the one hundred day twenty day restriction is really prohibitive, and the offer of uh, a temporary use permit and rezoning is also once again very time consuming and costly. Um, I would like to look to the city of Nelson, which actually offers three different levels for their short term policy, one of them being um, a, a complete year. 
um, the other one like four months and then one 31 days or less. Um, and that's, you know, that's looking to them. They've, they've done the work. There's other communities that have done this. I think I would love to see that compromise position. And, um, you know, there's lots of reasons, other environmental and, and, and demands, destination management demands that if the 100 and 20 day limit is put in place it means that we're going to have more people coming in the summer which are the prime months and and we really want to disperse we want to support uh, community economic development throughout the year so we want to be able to invite more people to come in the shoulder season i also want to make two just other quick points str operators i mean we think of the restaurants and retail as benefiting from visitors and destination bc estimated estimates that a visitor, an overnight guest spends at least $100 per day, um, whereas opposed to day tripper probably doesn't. STR operators, they support and provide jobs in the economy as well by gardeners, by housing construction, by the service maintenance. So they're helping to fulfill if they can operate year round, providing those jobs as well. And then the other point with um, STRs, if we limit the 120 day limit, when we hopefully do, if we get the MRDT here, um, uh, that will also limit the potential income from the MRDT. And, and um, as we were proposing, the MRDT tax would, some of the money would go towards affordable housing. Um, so uh, in short, that I'm just, would really like a compromise position that offers a commercial license for those that want to operate and then the the 120 day limit oh one other point i want to mention is people um are also talking about the whole house being offered if you actually go on airbnb and look at those places there's very few that are actually the whole house when they say whole house they're usually referring to a suite within a, a house or a, a cottage that's on a property. So that's a little bit of a misnomer that if you delve in a little deeper, um, there's not that many that are operating um, solely as uh, as a individual uh, house. But if they are uh, and they're operating commercially, I would like to see a commercial license that would enable them to do so. Thank you. Great, right. thank you, Jody. Uh, Hope, did you manage to get a hold of uh, Sylvain? I have not heard anything, so um, okay. maybe she was unable to join us. I haven't received any other requests um, in the chat function. So All I right. Uh, well, I will uh, call for anybody else that would like to make a public submission at this time, please. Um, I'm Ann Ramsey, and I submitted a yeah. letter. Yeah. And I actually have been checking the chat button, but it doesn't seem to be registering. I'm wondering if I could read my letter publicly. Uh, it's on the public record, uh, and so, but um, how long is it? Um, not very long, but I think I've brought up some points that haven't been brought up, and that's why okay. I've decided. Okay, let's go ahead then. Thank you. There has been an acknowledgement, the acknowledged need on Bowen over the last many years for more stable rental housing. I'm suggesting that these newly proposed amendments need some adjusting to allow some STRs as well as assist in furthering the priority of long-term housing rentals. It is stated in the material presented, short-term rentals used within secondary suites and detached secondary suites were a prevalent request in the community feedback. This was also strongly supported by the Housing Advisory Committee on the premise that restricting such use would lead to costly decommissioning of potential long-term rental units and a big reduction in the long-term stock, quote, ending. This implies that the Housing Advising Committee is hoping that some of those STR secondary suites or accessory buildings may be um, offered for long-term rental. Their position seems to be, let's not make STRs illegal and eliminate the possibility of them potentially being rented long-term. However, nowhere does it state in the material presented the, that the STR of entire dwellings was a pre prevalent community request or supported by the Housing Advisory Committee. If, as it is stated, that 120 days of STR's operation would yield similar income to a full year of long-term rental, then this 120-day limit is in place 
to give the same financial benefit renting a secondary suite or secondary accessory building as an SDR to those renting to long term. This would encourage housing that we need on Bowen. To protect residential areas and long-term housing, most municipalities across the province, and I'm quoting now from your material, and beyond have restricted SDR use to principal residences. However, Bowen Island has a high proportion of non-principal residences, 20% of homes, where part-time residents are still in an, an integral part of the community. Those who are, uh, end of quote, those who are non-residents and live in the Lower Mainland are able to be an integral part of the community for sure. However, those who do not have a principal residence close to Bowen Island and are wanting to rent more than 120 days are not an integral part of the community. A non-principal resident has another residence. Allowing non-residents to operate an SDR is a financial win for the owner, not for the community. As it has become quasi-legal in the last few years to do so, there has indeed been a financial bonus to some non-resident owners. Should owning a home as a non-resident now be a means to a secondary income at a disadvantage to local people? Are we now going to present a legal opportunity to have STRs, to have STR to people who are now considering purchasing a second home on Bowen? The argument is put forward that non-principal residents have local staff to maintain their properties for STR use. I assure you as a non-resident that the hiring of local people to help maintain non-residential property is necessary regardless of whether one lives on Bowen part-time and doesn't rent or lives on Bowen and part-time and does rent. Our community concern has been to provide housing for those who don't have the privilege of owning even one home. Over very active, our very active and successful Bowen tourism has increased the number of visitors to Bowen. However, those staying in SDRs have all the facilities they need to be independent for cooking and meals. Without doubt, there are other ways that they add economically to the community. However, bed and breakfast people need to rely on community businesses more, as do the tourists that make day trips over to Bowen. I believe that the largest benefit of SDRs is as a financial benefit to the owners, not to the whole community. Long-term renters benefit local owners and businesses and help create a healthy diversity on Bowen. There is currently in place a way to obtain temporary permits for those whose circumstances are not covered in the regulations. In summary, one of the guiding principles of these bylaws informed by community feedback is to quote, minimize impact on availability and affordability of long-term housing. Thus, our regulations need to accommodate those seeking long-term housing, as well as resident owners, tourists, and local businesses. Compromises need to be made on both sides of the issue. I give my support for STR for 120 days only to resident owners. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you, Anne. Okay. Um, I will ask again, I will ask a second time, are there any further submissions? And I will ask, sorry? Okay, and then I'll ask a third time and final time for any further submissions. Last chance. All right. Since there are no further public input and council does not wish to have a further staff report, then the recommendation is that all written and verbal submissions regarding bylaw amendments for short-term rentals amendment bylaw numbers 501, 503, and 2020 up to and including Monday, June 28, 2020 be received and that the public hearing be adjourned. Okay, do I have a second for that, please? I'll second it, but I think it's bylaws 501, 502, and 503. Oh, okay, that's that's there was a misprint. Okay, thank you, Allison. I appreciate that. So, sort of as amended there. Um, uh, you're a second, and all in favor? Aye. Okay, that concludes the public hearing. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, just before everybody leaves, do we want to uh, try to get into that into the closed meeting at this time? How does everybody feel about that? We have uh, Patrick on board if we decide to do that. 
I would rather need... take a break. Okay. Please. Okay. That's going to be an hour and a half, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. What time is it now? Well, it's only four to five. Four to five, yeah. Okay. So, and we're starting again at 6.15. That's correct, yeah. So, is there any chance of doing half of Patrick's presentations, like one and not the other? Well, that's what I'm asking, yeah. yeah. I would rather take a break. I would rather six take hours a break. in a row is just more than I... Okay, no, I understand. That's the way it was scheduled, so that's what we'll do. Thank so, you very much. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you all at 6.15. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to post the, the YouTube video yeah. now, so. Fabulous. Thank you, Hope. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Bye for now.